Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 10. Continuing from the lecture 9, we'll talk about the compaction. Um, so we've seen how to obtain this compaction curve from the laboratory proctor test. It could be from the standard proctor test and you can also use the modified proctor test. Um, today, we'll talk about the fabric and structure of the compacted fine grain soil and this corresponds to the uh, chapter 5 and uh, section 5.5 to 5.6 you can read it uh, more details from the textbook um, the, the effect of compaction on the soil structure is shown in this figure and as we learned this side is the west side of optimum west of optimum and this is dry of optima. And the, in the dry side of optimum, clay structure independent of the type of compaction and it forms the flocculated or the randomly oriented structure. So you end up with this kind of edge to face or edge to edge fabric. It could be edge to edge. And so this side is more flocculated. And this side is dispersed. With the higher water content, um, you have dispersed soil. When the compactive effort is low and as the compactive effort increases so going to the upper side clay particle becomes more oriented so you can see from here you will become more like aligned so you have to remember the clay particle is platy, so it's very like flat and platy particle, and they can arrange and form some flocculated structure, and also they can be dispersed in a high water content condition. And in the west side, you it's more likely to be disturbed, dispersed, or parallelly oriented depending on the compactive effort. And in the dry side, it will be like flocculated with the lower water content but as you increase the compactive effort it will be more uh, aligned a little bit so as the compactive effort increases well we know that dry density increases and voice ratio decreases and permeability because the voice ratio is now small so you have small pores and void, void so permeability will decrease and the particle structure wise it will be more uh, parallel it will be more oriented so then uh, all happen to the engineering properties of the fine grain soil so let's look at the permeability first huh? permeability is the ability for water to penetrate and flow through the soil so this also is interchangeably used with the hydraulic conductivity so if the permeability is large then it can the water can flow through fast and if the permeability is low then the, you know, the flow will be very slow um, when you look at this compaction curve so this is the compaction curve and we will see that this is the optimum water content so this side is the dry side of the optimum and this side is the west side of the optimum right yes. and you can see in the dry side with the increasing water content the permeability decreases quite fast and then um, in the uh, west side it becomes steady and slightly increases huh? so k is more consistent with increasing water content 
in the west side on the left side of the optimum and when you look at this figure uh, this arrow shows the change in moisture and density from the permeation so maybe it starts from here and as you uh, inject the water the water content increases so it goes to here and what about here as you uh, inject the water and as the water wets the soil so water content increases so that it goes to here and you can see that the dry density slightly decreases so that's why you have reduction in permeability also here too so uh, in summary increasing water content results in a decrease in permeability on the dry side of the optimum water content up to the water optimum water content thereafter a slight increase in permeability on the west side so that's the uh, effect of water content and compaction on the permeability of fine grain soil and then what about the compressibility so compressibility means that how compressible the soil is so how the high compressibility means that it's soft so it can be compressed easily for a given load and it's low compressibility is very hard so at low stresses uh, you can see uh, let's look at this figure and x-axis the pressure the stress and uh, y-axis is the void ratio as you uh, increase the pressure or the stress so as you uh, apply the higher force to the soil the void ratio decreases and in a dry compacted and or undisturbed sample void ratio decreases this much but at the same time the fabric is preserved in the uh, west side compacted soil they start from this kind of edge to edge condition or dispersed condition and with the increasing load it settles more so the, it, uh, the deformation is bigger than the dry compacted soil so this is more compressible so the reason is that um, you remember let me go to the second page of this these two different structure the fabric so dry compacted soil will have maybe edge to edge and face to edge this kind of a, the clay fabric and wet compacted soil will be dispersed like this So then when you apply the load so you're pushing down the soil with some force then this edge to edge or edge to face flocculated structure can resist over a certain load on the other hand in dispersed fabric it will collapse so it has more room to move down so it can be uh, more compressible but what happens if the stress becomes much much greater and greater so you're increasing the stress and more and more and more and then at a certain point the soil will collapse and their flocculated structure will collapse or break so then this becomes parallelly oriented like this so that's why here dry compacted soil in a low stress region maybe this is the low stress region it's compressible less it's less compressible but when it exceeds a certain point it dramatically compresses so fabric change here so now it becomes aggregated and more uh, parallelly oriented and this will be the wet compacted soil and this will be dry compacted yep, it's already here huh? wet compacted 
So, in summary, the, the sample compacted on the wet side is more compressible in low stress regimes, but it becomes less compressible in high stress than the one compacted on the dry side. Okay. And the swelling potential. Um, so swelling potential means that um, whether it can swell by observing the water and the volume expands. So when the soil is compacted dry side, it has high swelling potential. So you can think of a dry compacted soil with the low water content, low moisture content. When it rains, it can absorb more water so it can swell. But uh, if it is wet compacted, so it already has sufficient amount of water, so it wouldn't absorb that much additionally. So it wouldn't swell as it were for the um, dry compacted soil. But on the other hand, if you have high water content, if the soil is wet compacted, and shrinkage potential is bigger. When it dries and when it rains. So compact clay is compacted on the uh, dry side of optimum, the larger deficiency of water and therefore have a larger tendency to absorb water and thus swell more. And vice versa for the, uh, the wet compacted clay. And finally, what about the strength? And here we have a uh, several graph, you know, A and B and C. Um, let's think about the um, what we talked about, the liquid limit and the plastic limit and liquidity index in chapter 2. So you have a water content increases and here you have plastic limit and liquid limit. And when the water content is less than the plastic limit, it shows the brittle behavior and then plastic and it becomes viscous liquid. And when the uh, when you compare the relative water content, uh, water content, the natural water content to the plastic limit and liquid li liquid limit, you get the liquidity index, which is natural water content minus PL over PI. So um, let's look at here. Um, so one and two. Oh, okay. In this figure. Sample 1 and 2 is dry compacted. And sample 4, 5, 6 are wet compacted clay. Right? And 3 is compacted at the water, optimum water content. Huh? So then, uh, degree of the particle orientation here. Two, 1, 2 is uh, dry compacted, so it will be like randomly oriented with the flocculated structure. So here will be like this, and three, four, five. This will be more oriented, huh? this. and parallelly oriented. So then, what about the stress? So this one is uh, you have a soil compacted like cylindrical specimen and then with the loading frame you apply the force and if you divide by this air, the cross-sectional area of the specimen and this is the deviator stress sigma d so one two is the dry compacted soil is the big and you can see that as it or the stress the stress increases quite fast with the increasing strain and then it kind of crumbles here also it crumbles here so it shows the brittle behavior 
because of the low water content. And 4, 5, 6, so 4, 5, 6, as the water content increases, you can see this is more like plastic behavior and it's a wet compacted soil. And at the optimum water content, you get also the plastic behavior like this. But it doesn't crumble. Well, it just fa it doesn't like, crush right? like the brittle uh, dry compacted soil. So if you compare the strength wise, the one two the dry compacted soil have shows them uh, higher strength than the wet compacted soil. In terms of the behavior, it shows the brittle behavior. On the other hand, the wet compacted soil shows the plastic behavior. So here's the question. Which side of the optimum makes the compacted kaolinite specimen more rigid and stronger? Of course, it will be dry compacted. So this is the summary table. Uh, we talked about the fine grain soil, the compaction of the fine grain soil. Um, the structure, if it's dry compacted, it's gonna be like this, so flocculated and randomly oriented. And on the other hand, in the west, if it's wet, uh, wet compacted, then it will be more parallel oriented. Depending on the compactive effort, it could be dispersed or aggregated and parallel. And permeability, it decreases like this with the water content. So it has higher permeability when the water content is small, so more permeable. And if it's let, uh, wet compacted, wet side compacted, it's less permeable. And compressibility, it's more compressible at a high stress. If it's uh, wet compacted, then it's more compressible at a low stress. In terms of the swelling potential, it's high. potential and this one will have shrinkage potential uh, strength this is the dry side uh, dry compacted clay will show the greater strength and this one shows the lower strength and but plastic so here, brittle plastic. So then, what to choose? So whether uh, we have to choose the dry side compaction or wet side compaction for a given soil or the for a given so soil of field. So then, if the uh, if your structure needs high strength, then you need to compacting on the dry side. So to increase strength and stiffness, you need to use the dry compaction. And if you want to have a consistent permeability, to control the permeability, then you need to compact it on the wet side. So then what would be the example? For the dry side, maybe it could be the highway, subgrade, pavement, right? which is exposed to many vehicle loading. And the core of earth dam blocking the water. So in this case, uh, Unavoidably, you inevitably you will have a water permeation 
from the off stream in the reservoir so then the water will wet the soil and you don't want to have the swelling or you don't want to have the uh, a dramatic change in water uh, permeability okay so then the last topic is the compaction of granular soil um, and this is very simple so you can have loose packing with the low dry density and high uh, dry density you have a dense packing and sometimes you can have honeycomb fabric which is metastable structure it's kind of a loose fabric and it's uh, prone to liquefaction that means that when there's a shake by the earthquake or some dynamite or the nearby the construction if the vibration comes in then the structure will collapse and it will be compacted quite easily uh, so that's why for the granular soil most efficient method to compact is vibration no electrical forces due to the small specific surface area and gravity forces between the particles are greater than the surface force soils easily move from a loser into a uh, denser packing through vibration and maximum voids ratio e max is loosest state loosest possible state for a dry soil and minimum voids ratio e mean is densest possible state achieved by the mechanical means but without grain crushing so typically we obtain the minimum voids ratio by using the uh, proctor test and maximum voids ratio by air pluviating the soil without any water so voids ratio of, of given soil is e in that case we can define the relative density relative density using this e max e mean and the current voids ratio to characterize the denseness of the natural granular soil um, the definition of this one e max minus e over e max minus e mean so you use the um, here the e is the voids ratio of a given soil of the field so then if the current voids ratio is same with maximum voids ratio so it's in a very loose state then relative density will be 100 percent oh zero percent sorry zero percent and if the E is the minimum voids ratio, then DR will be 100%. And also you can express this one in terms of the dry density, because the dry density is rho S over 1 plus E. So then if you manipulate this, um, rho D plus E rho D is rho S so then E is rho S over rho D minus E so from this the voice ratio is inversely proportional to 1 over uh, the rho D so the DR can be also expressed as a function of dry density 1 over rho d minus 1 over rho d over 1 over rho d minus 1 over rho d and here minimum maximum minimum and there's a other parameter called density index and you can see from the definition this id is not the same with dr so just keep in mind that and using this relative density you can categorize the denseness of the soil um, so if the voids ratio no the dry, uh, relative density range is 0 to 15 percent it's very loose state and if it's 85 to 100 percent then it's very dense state so in between very loose to loose medium dense and dense state and very dense state um, here are some uh, good quotation from a book that I like uh, when you see 
the section, cross section of this two, two different soil, it has the vo same voice ratio. This one voice ratio and this one voice ratio is the same. So, but you can see the which one will be weaker. I think this one with the honeycomb structure will be will have a weaker strength because it's more collapsible. So the relative density of the void ratio alone is not sufficient to characterize the engineering properties of the granular soil. Two soils with the same relative density may contain very different pore sizes. That is, the pore size distribution probably is a better parameter to correlate with the engineering properties. So here uh, it has the bigger pore, but has small pore. Right? But the particle, the grain size distribution will be the same. and void ratio is the same, but pore size distribution will be different. Engineers must not, not only consider the behavior of the soil as compacted, but the behavior of the soil in the completed structure, especially at the time when the stability or deformation of the structure is most critical. For example, consider an element of compacted soil in the dam core. As the height of the dam increases, a total stresses on the soil element increases. When the dam is performing its intended function of retaining water, the percent saturation of compacted soil element is increased by the permeating water. So when the dam is constructed, then the water will permeate, so it's going to increase the water content of the soil inside. Thus, the engineer designing the earth dam must consider not only the strength and compressibility of the soil element as compacted, but also its property after it has been subjected to increased total stress and saturated by the permeating water. So as we said before here, permeability changes with the water content and stress also, um, the strength changes. So for the case of the core of the earth stem, it might be a good choice and wise choice to compact the soil on the west side. Okay, that will be all for this lecture. And thank you for your attention.